Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to implement a rope using bones. So let's see what we have here. So I've made a few setups to see how the rope behaves. As you can see, we can grab it and if we let it, let it go, it collides with the environment. I've also connected two objects to it. So it can, as you can see, it can hold the two objects. Same thing here. And I've also done, I've implemented a long rope. This is 10 meters and 50 segments. So it, it's considerable, but apparently it does hold. So last thing we have here, a rope connected to two fixed points uh, that is actually holding a one ton um, weight, which is a considerable weight, but as you can see, it does work. So before I go ahead and uh, show you how to implement this, uh, I'm going to uh, say a few words about ropes in general. The reason why you don't see a lot of tutorials on this subject is because uh, the ropes are hard to um, calibrate. So they're not hard to implement, as we'll see later, but they are hard to calibrate because they use physics constraints to uh, hold them together. So the, when the physics constraints are a lot, there are a lot of constraints tied in a chain, they will uh, become unstable. So that's the reason. And also ropes uh, consume a lot of processing power. So don't expect uh, from this implementation that you'll be able to tie knots and something like that or have a, a reel uh, of rope a long rope you'll usually implement stuff like this short segments that you can use in your game and um, just try to um, work with that you will be able to connect weights to them as as you can see here but we'll also have to uh, calibrate that so let's go ahead so for the creation of uh, the rope, we we'll actually need to go into uh, Blender and uh, create the mesh with uh, the bones and then we'll import it here and continue here. But let's go ahead, uh, let's go over the components. So the underlying structure of a rope is actually uh, broken down into segments that, are, that we're going to implement with bones and these bones uh, will be um, skinned with a mesh so it, it's gonna be a continuous mesh uh, broken down into polygons that is going to be uh, tied to these bones now in for the collision uh, the mesh will not work for the collision we have to use capsules like you see here each bone uh, will have a capsule for collision and finally the, the bones between each other they will be uh, their movement will be limited relative to each other using physics constraints as you see here so you have four components the, the entire mesh and then we have segments of bones uh, each with their collision and they are connected using physics constraints so let's go ahead in blender and we'll create the mesh and the bones so let's go ahead and make a new file here i'll activate the screencast keys so you can see here what i'm doing so i'll dub out a and remove this so now very important uh, in order to for the skeleton mesh to import correctly um, we'll have to set the units, the world units here. So in world, go to units and set this to metric. And here the unit scale will put this to 0 0.01. So that means the unit is one centimeters long. Now, for in order to approximate a rope, we'll use a cylinder. So shift A and add the mesh cylinder. We'll just do 10 vertices, should be fine. 
radius of 2.5 centimeters and a length of 3 meters. Now let's save this quickly. Okay, so I have this uh, the mesh already. Let's smooth it so it looks better. But as you can see here, it's not smooth. Uh, I'll just go to auto smooth and put this to 60 so we we'll only smooth this part. Okay, so now if you look at if you tab into the mode and look at the mesh, you'll see that there are faces that go uh, from from the top to the bottom and this is not good because we want it to mesh to flex so we need to break it down into uh, segments so we push control R for that and then we tap 100 so double enter now we broke the mesh down into segments so it should be okay. Now we want to set the uh, origin here. It's just best to have it there. So we select all these vertices, push space and snap cursor to select it. And then we'll tab into object mode and then set origin to 3D cursor right here. Now we have the origin here. We'll put because we, when we export the origin that will be taken, it's, it's going to be this one right here. So the world origin, not this one. So we'll bring that down here. So we'll do snap cursor to center and then snap selection to cursor like this. Okay, so we've done the mesh. Now let's do the bones. So we'll shift A and add an armature, add a single bone like this. So as you can see, it's a tiny bone. We tab into edit mode, we'll select this upper part and then G and Z to grab it down vertically. And we want it to be stuck here. So we'll just select snap vertices and G, Z again and control. So it snaps right here. Now the bone is the exact length of the mesh. Now what we have to do is actually subdivide this. So we subdivide multi like this. And we'll actually subdivide it into 30 segments. So that's a lot of segments. Okay. Now I have this done. The only thing that remains to do is take this and me uh, parent the mesh to it. So now, as you see the mesh right here, <coughs> we'll parent this to the bones and we'll use weight painted um, parenting. So let's, so into the object mode, you select first the uh, mesh, then select the bone, and then we hit control P. So this will parent the mesh to the bones and we can select here with automatic weights. So what that means is that here, if we go into the edit mode of the mesh, we'll see that we have segments. So we have um, faces like this. So this paints for each bone paints the faces that will be affected by this bone. So if we go into the pose mode, we select the armature and go into the pose mode right here and select the bone. If we rotate it, we'll see that this bone affects this part of the mesh and this part of the mesh, but not further. Here, we see that it affects because it's, it, it parents this one to it, so it, for, uh, it moves. But if we take this one and rotate it, you see same behavior. It affects only a part of the mesh. So if you want this to be more uh, pretty, if I can say that, uh, then you can weight paint yourself this. Okay, so we've done this. Let's select the two meshes. Actually, we'll get into object mode here. So select the two meshes, and now we have to export them into FBX. 
So if you go here, FBX, I'll take this as five. Now, very important, the um, settings for the export. First of all, check selected objects here. Then with holding shift armature and holding shift mesh, then go into the armatures and deselect add leaves, leaf bones like this. So that's it. I just export this and now we go into Unreal Engine. So let's import what we've done. Let's just move this so it's easier. Like this. So if we right click and import and we'll take the one with the five that we just made. Okay, now here, uh, make sure the settings are the ones that you see here. The most important being to check skeletal mesh here. So I'll show you also what we have here for a second. Okay, so let's import that. You ignore this. This is for the mesh. It's not, you can. Uh, uh, resolve that on your own. Uh, okay, so it created all the assets that we needed. So we go into the physics assets right here. Now we've seen that we need a bone, a mesh, a bones, a mesh, um, capsule collisions, and uh, physics constraints. As you can see, it already created for us some physics constraints and um, a capsule collision, but it's not good because it's not for all of this. So let's go here and delete that. We'll get rid of those like this. Okay, so now select all, control A, select all here. And then we go into the tools here. So this is going to uh, allow us to create uh, capsules and physics constraints. So here we'll put the minimum bone size to 10, put any weight right here. Just look at these settings and do the same, exactly the same as you see here. So if we add here the bodies, <coughs> I can see that it already did the job for us because manually this would have been really hard to do. Okay, so now if you look at the graph here, on the left we have, on the left and on the, on the right we have the physics bodies, or the capsules, and in the middle we have the constraints. So a capsule is constrained it connected with the constraints to another capsule. That's what's happening here. So now we can um, go ahead and set the capsules. So if we select all these capsules from top to bottom, you see they are selected here. We can go ahead here and set their mass. We'll put the mass of uh, well, one kilo, let's say. I'll put a linear damping of five. Uh, 0 0.5 sorry and we'll talk about this later here I've actually made the material for the rope so we'll put that in this is so it has less friction when interacting with the environment so it doesn't seem that slippery okay so uh, physics type will live like this because it's by default it's simulated but if you don't have it like this you have to put it to simulate it but I'll just leave it by default Okay, we'll leave CCD for now like this and that's it for the capsules. Now if we go here and we select everything down the middle like this, we get all the physics constraints as you can see here. So now let's set that. So first we check disable collision, then uh, we'll just make sure that all these settings, if they're not by default like that, you make them like that. I'm not going to enumerate all of them, just make sure they're like this. So angular limits, so linear limits will have locked angular limits 
we'll put the limited and we'll change only this one so this is the twist angle and uh, in the in, around the z-axis we don't want it to twist that much so just put 10 here the soft constraints will disable for now and let's just put just select this and swing here and let's just put a target velocity of zero with a force of 500 this means that all the rotations that are going to happen are slowed down so this is helps us for the stability of the rope and also it adds kind of a resistance to air which looks makes the rope look more natural okay so that's it that's basically it right now you have a rope functioning rope so if you drag this into the scene make sure you drag the physics asset from here if we play right now as you'll see it already works okay so that's it basically now i'm going to talk about the limitations so as you see uh, sometimes it uh, will the, the rope will collide and will pass through objects like here this is kind of if i may say it's kind of normal for the ropes uh it, there is something you can do about that but usually if you put too much force on it it will pass through other objects even if you use uh even if you use a ccd continuous collision detection so as you can see here well that's if we go here into the physics and we select the physics constraint uh we're actually not the capsule if you check ccd um the thing is it will still pass through objects and it will also add some instability to the rope so i don't advise checking this so let's let's see what happens if we take this for example the one that we just made so look at how it behaves right now and if i activate let's take this from here go here in the physics so if we take all the all the capsules like this and we activate ccd and now if we try again as you can see it becomes really unstable so this is because there is a lot of uh, bodies that are colliding with each other and it just doesn't work very well with uh, a lot of physics constraints so i would advise keeping the ccd disabled okay it doesn't matter for this one it's disabled for the other ones okay so we've seen this now the more the most important thing about ropes is that um uh their the weight of each segment segment counts a lot so this is the main point that you can the main thing that you can do for stabilizing it is controlling its weight so if you look here for this one Let's go into physics right here and we'll select all the capsules. So as you can see, it has a mass of five kilos. So if you play this, if you look here, it works as it should. But if we go here and modify this and take this low, like something like 0 0.01 you'll see what will happen yeah so as you can see it really doesn't like it now the problem and this is this is very important for the stability of the ropes as I said the problem is that all these segments that we have here are connected between each other using physics constraints 
and physics constraints uh, use the mass of the objects to uh, relay the force from one object to another. So I've made a, an example to illustrate that. We just have two objects. They are connected. I'll just, I'll just move this. We just have two objects that are connected with physics constraint here. So this constraint connects this one to this one, the two cubes together. If we play this, what you see happening here is that the, f the, the smaller cube is actually trying to stay on the surface, but is pushed down by the larger cube. Now, if you look at the mass of the smaller cube, we'll see that it's 0, 0, 1, and the, the big one is a ton, one ton. So this is like 10 grams, and this is one ton. So this is, this illustrates very well how the physics constraints work. So if you have too much of a difference between, uh, between the weights that are relayed by the physics constraints, the smaller weight will actually get carried away by the, the big one. And when you have collision with objects, if you have a smaller weight here, it will just pu get pushed into other objects. So exactly the behavior that you have here. So this is why when you when we've put here zero zero one, if we simulate this, see what happens? It just passes through. And that is because its weight is really small and these objects pull on it so hard that it make it pass through the beam right here. And we can also see here Let's just simulate that. Same thing happens here. We have lower um, so if we go here, as you can see, their mass is 0 0.01. So the movement is very erratic because the white the white object is trying to pull this one which is heavier, trying to pull it up and it doesn't arrive because the forces get scaled by the mass of each segment of the rope. So if we go here and modify this and put this to 5 kilo, let's say. So I will save that and try again. Well now it acts as it should. It's stable and it works. Same thing happens here when I have this object. Um, so if you look at this rope, it's the same thing. So we'll have to increase its mass in, o in order to oppose resistance to this heavy object. So here, if you look at our weights, our mass is actually, I've put 15 kilos. So this is of course very big for rope because if we have like 20 segments, it goes, a rope will weigh something like 100 kilos, which is crazy for rope. But the, these are the compromises that we'll have to make in a game in order for the rope to be uh, stable. So this is, again, this is the biggest point of stability that you can make. Then if you, if you want to obtain different behaviors, if we select the physics constraints here, these will actually function as normal physics constraints like you would, like you've seen in other tutorials of mine. Uh, when I'm doing a uh, wheel or something like that. So just you'll calibrate them like that. Uh, one thing you will want to play all, also with is the projection. So the projection is a force that is applied. <coughs> so let's say that we have this capsule 
that is pulled by a force like this. Well, projection is actually a force that activates at a certain distance or rotation from where it should be and it actually pushes this back, tries to push this back. So try to <coughs> actually just run this, try to play around with this. <coughs> it will also help. And um, also a good thing to stabilize a rope <coughs> is to add friction, uh, actually to add damping. So if you select the capsules again, you see here linear damping, we've put it to one for this one. <coughs> the higher you go with this, the more stabilized it will be, but the rope will move more, <coughs> sorry, more unnatural because it will, it will lag behind. So if I put this to five, well, we'll just leave it to one, but know th that uh, the higher you go this, the more drag it will have in the air, it will stay behind of the movement, but it will be more stabilized. So uh, this is one thing where you can add damping and the other one is actually in the physics constraints. So if you select the physics constraints here, the one that I've already added here is the target velocity of zero for the rotation. So this is when, when actually, uh, when the capsule rotates around the other capsule. So this limits this movement. So it will actually be uh, good because it will collide less with others. So it will uh, create less chaos. So um, here I've also, <coughs> oh, this is another subject I'll say. <coughs> Uh, this velocity target, since we put them locked, well, this is a special case, but usually we put them locked so you don't have to use that. So yeah, uh, the big, uh, the big three uh, points uh, that we can use <coughs> to stabilize are the projection, the damping, here in the capsule, the damping, and most important, the mass. Now, last thing I want to show you is how you can do an elastic rope, and I've done this here. <coughs> so, if you play, sorry about that, let's move the player. Each time I play, it will. Okay. So, if you look here, you see that this actually acts as an elastic. And this is very nice if you want to use that. It's very nice if you might use it in your game. So let's see how we do this. So select this, go here in the physics, and then we select the physics constraints, all of them. So first of all, the uh, elasticity we've added, actually it's in, you'll only modify the linear limits. The, the angular limits have little to no um, effect here. So just use this. So uh, the, uh, the elasticity actually acts when this moves apart. So this is pulled, sorry the capsule is pulled like this. It will act as a force to keep it back down. So for that to work, we'll select all the physics constraints back. Oh, sorry, only the physics constraints like this. So we'll put the linear limits to free and then we'll go down here to the linear motor and we're gonna put the uh, position target of zero and then a strength I've put 10,000 here because the object that I'm pushing onto the, the rope there it's really heavy like uh, it weighs a ton so uh, one ton so um, yeah I've put this here and you can also use damping so this is so it doesn't bounce, bounce too much so it stabilizes pretty quickly so this you can use if you're doing an elastic rope this you can also 
So if you look here, as you can see, the, the elasticity does work because if we go back, let's let's deactivate that. Let's put this to locked, and you see a big difference. Now look look what happens here. Now there is a little bit of elasticity because of the way the physics constraints work, but if not, there isn't there isn't much actually. So if we put this back to free and the physics constraint the this reactivates and let's just bring it down let's say to six thousand so as you can see it's really elastic yeah so that's nice so that's how we can do it. If you want, of course, you can also, yeah, if you look, leave it like this, it will be rigid. It's, but, okay, let's just say that we lock this back and let's make it rigid, actually. So, f to make it rigid, to so make it stay straight like this, you play with the angular limits. So, if you bring those down to, let's say, 5. But this might also destabilize it, especially if there's a heavy weight pushing on it. Well, it does work, but so if it does to one, let's put this to one. Yeah, so because the, there are so many segments, actually the um, the angle between them is what we said here is the angle between each uh, neighbors so the angle is really low so but if we had two segments or something like that it will count a lot so if we put, let's put this locked let's just make sure yeah so it, it's really yeah Let's just leave them to limit it like this. Uh, I think it's not the best case to show this in. So let's play with this one. So we'll take the physics constraints, all of them, and then let's put this to lock. Let's try again now. So see what happens. So you get you get something really like uh, yeah, and it becomes unstable. Yeah, I was expecting that. Becomes something like a hose, as you can see. Yeah, but this is because it's trying to keep it like this so it projects it every time it passes so I would say put this to limited maybe or no just uh, yeah put this to limited pull this to zero like this or maybe one let's put this to one and then what we can let's try it out like this so it should already be better but yeah, yeah, so it's it's already sta more stable. But what we can do to to make this better is actually activate soft constraints here for the angular limits. And we'll put this to, let's say, 1,000 or 5,000 even. Like this, and uh, we'll add a damping also. Sorry, it's not that, it's here. So if we try again now, we should see an improvement. So it is, but it doesn't stick, right? Yeah, and it does try to correct itself, as you can see. So it acts more as a hose than a rope. It's more rigid, but I think we should put this, yeah, 10,000 maybe. Uh, 
and we'll put here a zero. This doesn't make much of a difference, I think. So, so let's try again. Yeah. So as you can see, there are some limitations. It becomes unstable when you try to do this. But of course, if you don't move it fast, if you move it slow like this, if your game moves slower, it's okay. So now, the last thing I want to show you is a thing that you can uh, do for all ropes. Uh, there's a thing called substepping. So if you go into the project settings here and look for substepping, and you activate this, this will actually uh, because uh, the physics uh, objects have their position calculated each frame so usually you're tied into the frame rate that you have but this actually lets you have steps in between those frames so the number of steps that you do put here is the number of steps that will do between each two consecutive frames so this will add uh, this will help you with the stability, should help. Frankly, I didn't see too much of a difference. As you can see here, it's still, yeah. But it's something that you can do to improve your physics. But be careful, this consumes quite a lot of resources. So just test it. See if it works and if it actually, uh, it's uh, worth it. Yeah, so... Uh, that's it. I hope this has been useful. Uh, if uh, so, please uh, like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.